So someone told you that you should get into mountain biking and you're like, yeah, I really want to try that. And so you start shopping for bikes and you're just like, whoa, those things are way too expensive for me. Well, you're in luck. Watch this video because I'm going to show you what bike you should probably get for your budget. I've talked a bit about it recently, so I want to get a little more specific on what your options are out there. And this spring of 2023 is going to be one of the best years to buy a mountain bike on a budget because we're in the oversupply of the bike industry. Big discounts. So I'm going to start off with a few basic specifications that you want to look for um, there's a couple of different what I'm gonna call budget categories there's gonna be the sub $1,000 category and, or right around a thousand dollars and then there's gonna be like the 1,000 to 2,000 dollar category and so on and so forth um, for somebody who's never mountain bike before they're probably gonna want to get into mountain biking for less than a thousand bucks um, I do, however, strongly recommend that you avoid big box store um, and department store bikes. That would be like your Walmarts and Targets, um, even Dick's Sporting Goods. They might have a couple of borderline better bikes, but um, those bikes might get you on a ride or two, but you're going to run into all kinds of problems with them. And there's a safety thing that I concerned about because even though they say they're a mountain bike, they really are not really designed to hold up to true off-road riding. So um, that being said, the beginning price point, the absolute bottom, and we're talking new bikes here, price I think you should spend would be six or seven hundred dollars and go up from there. So. Um, that's going to be my starting point, and it's for a very valid reason. I want you to be safe. Um, I'm sorry, even if you just absolutely have like hardly any money and you want to get into mountain biking, it's not very safe for you to go out on a Walmart bike. and It just isn't. Um, there is one exception to that rule, which I will bring up here in this video. And then there's upgradeability so some bikes they're not very upgradable and then there's bikes that you can buy and then you can continue to upgrade them and end up with like an expert or pro level bike in the end so I tend to like upgradable bikes but I am gonna bring up a couple of bikes that are more challenging to upgrade and what makes them more challenging to upgrade is the rear end spacing of the frame is sometimes old traditional 135 spacing or if they have a wider spacing they still use a quick release lever so you basically pop the lever unscrew the little end and you can pop the rear wheel out super popular on bikes for kind of for a very long time but over the last 10 years probably more so the last like six or seven years uh, through axles have become pretty much the norm for all uh, nicer bikes and the spacing on the rear end is 148 what we call boost spacing and then the front end is 110 the front end isn't as important because you can upgrade forks and get a boost fork but it's rare that you're going to see a boost fork on a non-boost rear end or vice versa usually if they're boost they're boost all the way around boost just means a little bit wider than what they traditionally were um <clears throat> so those things are important because if you intend to buy a bike and you're like okay i'm on a budget i want to buy this bike and then i'm going to want to upgrade it as i gain more skill or get better so on and so forth and I gain more interest or I'm just on a budget and I fully plan to upgrade I just can't afford to have buy the expensive bike I want to buy the less least expensive bike and then add parts as I you know earn more money so on and so forth there's all kinds of strategies right so that's why I consider the upgradable category important versus the non upgradable category 
so now that I've brought that kind of stuff up, let's talk about some bikes. And I'm going to start with the non-upgradable category, and then we'll talk about the upgradable category. Okay, so over here on Canyon's website, they have this new bike that I just recently saw that they came out with. It's called the Grand Canyon. Um, pretty impressive. So this is uh, a bike in the non-upgradable category. That's the category I'm going to call it, um, or difficult to upgrade. And I'll tell you why in just a moment, but here it is. This bike is pretty amazing, especially when you look at the price. Where is the price here? We gotta get down to where they list the bikes. Here we go. $699. That is awesome. So $699, you get into a pretty modern geometry bike. Um, pretty decent spec. It's even 12 speed. But the drawback is, is it has quick release axles um, on the rear and the front and um, 100 millimeter travel fork, so on and so forth. It's got a nice wide selection of sizes. One thing I like about the Canyon website is you can just put in your height and your um, inseam and you can choose inches or centimeters depending on where in the world you're from and it'll help you pick out the proper size so that is awesome i like that um and so on and so forth again the weak spot is the quick release axles um but if you're on a budget and 699 will get you into a canyon like this that is awesome so that is the first one that I want to talk about. And let's look at a couple of others in the non-upgradable category. Okay, some more really decent geometry progressive bikes are from Trek. They're the Marlin series. They have the 4, 5, the 6, and the 7. Quite a wide price range. You can get into it for $629.99. Oh, even over here. $599.99. I don't know why that one's cheaper. It's on sale. Maybe they just have an overstock of that one. Um, so you could actually get a bike that's supposedly supposed to be a little nicer for less money than the Gen 4, or not Gen 4, uh, Marlin 4. Um, and then you have the 6 for $749, and you're just going to get a little bit better components and better fork, things like that. And then you get into the 7 for over $1,000. Okay, so the first thing I want to say is I wouldn't recommend the Marlin 7. So I would stick with one of these three because we're in the non-upgradable category. Um, the Marlin 7 still has a quick release uh, front and rear axle, and that makes the bike extremely difficult to upgrade. And once you get into the $1,000 and over category, there's some other bikes that actually have through axles and boost spacing and i would highly recommend those so only get the lower end ones here the four five or six depending on your budget and what you want for components i would shy away from spending this kind of money for a bike that has quick release axles here's one that's going to shock you and it's going to shock you because i said stay away from walmart department store bikes right well this is that one little slight exception that I have in the category of non-upgradable mountain bikes. Now, I will only recommend this bike if you absolutely cannot afford to get like the Trek or the Canyon, and there's some other brands out there too, but if this is all you can afford for $398, you can get into a decent enough bike to get a feel for mountain biking. But don't expect this thing to be awesome. It's going to get you in there. It's got relatively modern geometry, um, so on and so forth. But it's got quick release. It's kind of got a much cheaper kind of lower end crank on it. Things like that. It does have a SR Suntour fork, which is a decent name brand fork. So um, aluminum frame, so on and so forth. But I mean, if you absolutely can't afford <laughs> the Trek or the Canyon, then 
this would be my recommendation, but I would try to shy away from it. Um, the one thing I do know about this bike is it's kind of shocking because usually in department store bikes, you can't get different sizes. This one, I do believe, comes in a small, a medium, or a large. So make sure you pick one that fits you if you do go this route. Now I'm going to talk about bikes that are over $1,000 but are upgradable. And Canyon, again, we're back at Canyon again. Um, and the one that they have is called the Stoic. Uh, pretty decent bike. And this one's going to have pretty progressive geometry. So we're talking about something that you could actually take out on the trail and hit some of the more progressive features and so on and so forth. But it'll still ride really well as a regular trail bike. Um, let's scroll down here and get to, um, this is the one thing I like about it, is it does have a um, uh, 148 by 12 millimeter through axle. Um, very important because then that means this frame is completely upgradable. Um, you can start out for $11.99, I believe it is. Let's see, let's find out. Where are their bikes? Oh, see the bikes. I got to <laughs> navigate these websites. Yeah, $11.99, and you can get into a pretty sweet bike. It's got Dior level components, so on and so forth. SR Sun Tour fork, okay. Not the greatest fork out there, but definitely decent. It is an air fork. It's got 34 millimeter stanchions, so they're going to hold up um, to more abuse, things like that. So uh, this is an impressive bike for the money. So this is where I would try to push somebody to getting into the over $1,000 price point because it's like, yes, you can spend over $1,000 and get just a sweet starter bike and if you want to upgrade later you can upgrade the components okay so now we're looking at the marin website over here their logo is kind of small uh, marin's been around for a very long time um, they have this bike called the san quentin so here is where you can actually see that jump on a single brand so the san quentin uh, modern progressive geometry um, super sweet riding bike, but at this price point, the San Quentin one, it does have quick release. So kind of runs into that thing where you're spending under a thousand dollars, you're going to have quick release and you're not going to be able to easily upgrade the bike if you want to upgrade it later on. So I would push to spend the extra $500. I'd really try to convince somebody they're looking at these and get into the San Quentin too. <laughs> Right, so $14.99, you now get uh, rear through axle, uh, that 148 by 12 through axle, and boost spacing and super nice progressive geometry, things like that. Um, you also get into a dropper post. Notice this one doesn't have a dropper post. Looks like it has a quick release if you needed to raise and lower it by hand. But a dropper post comes in handy on the trail. You just push a lever. You can drop your seat down, do the technical stuff, push the lever, seat comes back up, pedal along, right, so on, so far. Then another $500 up, you can get even better components. You're going to get a better fork, better um, drivetrain, things like that. Um, but these bikes are awesome, 27.5 wheel size, things like that. So uh, definitely some really good options here. And if you absolutely can't spend over $1,000, the San Quentin one is great. But keep in mind, we just looked at the Canyon that was uh, $1,199 that had through axle. So um, it's just one of those things where if you do think you're going to need to upgrade the bike later on, I definitely will push you to getting into having a frame that has a through axle on it. Okay, so here over at Specialized, they have the Fuse. Um, I really like the Fuse. I actually had one in 2016, and it had all the modern spec stuff for that time. Um, really liked it. Um, dropper posts, all the things I needed. Um, it was a 27.5 plus bike. There was a time when plus bikes were super popular. It does look like they're still trying to continue that 27.5 
uh, tread. Um, I don't know if this is a plus bike. It looks like a pretty big tire. Stop popping things up on the screen. But we can get down here and we can start looking at the specifications. Um, let's go right to the tires just to see. Uh, okay, 2.6. So not quite plus, just shy of that. So that's their thing. Um, this is $2,400, but let's go back and look at this one here. Um, basically $1,100. It's actually on sale. It normally is $1,500. Um, really good deal. $27,500. Um, just over $1,000. This is going to have your through axle. Um, super sweet bike modern geometry so on and so forth it's a trusted name brand um here's what i'm talking about the 148 millimeter through axle so super sweet bike x fusion i don't know much about them but i know specialized has been using them for a while um, but it, i would consider it an entry level fork um, 130 millimeters of travel to get you in the door something you could always upgrade later so on and so forth so if i was to talk about which one of these bikes that i just mentioned out of the six that i would choose six brands and models um this would be it they would be the specialized fuse um i just think it's an awesome bike you can even upgrade it to 29 inch wheels later if you wanted to which you can clearly see they have a 29er version here um and a 29er comp here so you know three thousand dollars for a hardtail now you're getting up there right but you can get in the door for 11.99 sweet deal so there are a lot more bikes out there than just the ones i showed you but those are kind of the ones i've noticed lately and i'm like these are really good bikes for people to get into mountain biking and so on and so forth I really would recommend you, you know, stretching your wallet as much as you can to get into that upgradable category. But if you can't, uh, try to get into the the Grand Canyon from Canyon or the Marlin four, five, or six from Trek. Um, and you know, I did mention the Ozark Trail Walmart bike. Um, that would be a desperate move if you just absolutely can't afford. To spend any more money than that um, but I that bike would accomplish what it would accomplish is getting you into the sport getting you to try mountain biking so on and so forth but then the bike would pretty much be something you can't really upgrade on so there you have it um, one thing you might have just noticed and maybe you've been asking throughout this whole video is like Hey, Shad, how come I don't see any rear suspension on any of these bikes? Well, because you do not need a full suspension bike. There's few exceptions to that. If you live in an area where it's basically lift access, bomb downhill, gnarly mountain biking, things like that, then sure, maybe. But then you're going to jump into that, you know, $2,500 to $3,000 category. You do not need a full suspension bike to get into mountain biking and to enjoy it. And if you're just getting into mountain biking, you don't want to go ride this big gnarly stuff anyway. You want to develop your skills on a hardtail. And then when you do eventually move to a full suspension bike, you'll have a good set of skills to do it. So that is why you don't see any full suspension bikes here. Um, shop around. Right now, spring of 2023 is a great time to get some good deals. So definitely shop around and definitely keep in mind the upgradability of the bike that you're buying. And that's really going to be the key factor uh, of that um, 148 millimeter spacing in the rear with a 12 millimeter through axle kind of hard to follow i'm putting it here on the bottom of the screen so you you definitely want that in your frame if you plan to upgrade in the future because then you're unlimited with the 
highest end components you can upgrade with that. Um, if you don't have that, you're going to be limited to lower or mid-range components. And, you know, it is what it is, and maybe you won't mind that. But that's basically what I mean between upgradability and just a budget bike that's decent but not really upgradable, right? So I hope you like this video. Um, I'm actually trying to figure out... <laughs> How can I get some of these bikes that I'm mentioning to tr test out and present on my channel um, so you know kind of how they ride and so on and so forth. But of course that costs money. Um, so believe it or not, subscribing to my channel helps me. Liking my videos helps me, things like that. Um, I don't make much money on the channel, but the little bit of money I do make, I want to put back into my channel, and that would be one way I do it, is by buying parts or bikes or things like that that I can review and talk to you about. Sweet. Appreciate your support for my channel. Peace.